with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Byron King, editor of Rickards Gold Speculator at Agora Financial. Thanks so much for joining me. It's great to be with you. Thank you. Great. And we are here at PDAC. It's the first day. It's the first morning. Um, can you give me a sense of the mood already? The sense of the mood on the day one of day PDAC one. on Sunday morning comes from uh, the other night I was out to dinner with some friends. This one guy is a chief financial officer for a very substantial mining company. You would know the name. And he's been doing this for 30 years. And I said, so what's going on? And he said, this is the worst market I've ever, ever seen. And I can't wait to get to work every morning. And I think that kind of sums it up, you know, right now at the beginning. Uh, it is a tough market. It's tough to raise money. It's tough to find partners. You've got all sorts of weird things happening, both within the industry, within the sector, uh, government, regulation, internationally, jurisdictions, the whole geopolitics, lots of weird stuff happening. The mining industry ought to be doing great, but it's, it's, it's a tough market. Mm -hmm. But the people who are in it can't wait to get, to get to work in the morning because there's so much opportunity to do really great things. And it's right now. I, I'll get preachy just a moment. Right now, during the depths of the, what's going on, this is when the companies are assembling the projects, assembling the groups that are really going to explode upwards in the, you know, in the, you know, the seasons and the years to come. Okay, well, it's good to start off with that optimism. What opportunities? Which markets do you see opportunities in right now? Well, I think the biggest global market right now. Uh, uh, has to be copper. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, the, you know the world is electrifying. You know they say water is life. Well, electricity is the quality of life, and you can't do electricity without copper. And you know if you live in North America, if you live in Europe, you're like, oh yeah, I flip the switch and the lights come on. Yeah, if you live most other parts of the world, you, there is no switch. There are no wires. There you know the lights don't come on. You know you're and and so uh, th that part of the world is still building out. Mm -hmm. uh, we are we as a humanity are using entire mines worth of copper every year, big mines, every year, out of the ground process, you know, on the cargo ships, off it goes to be, to be used. We're not replacing them. We say we're not replacing them. There are people out looking, people out there finding things. Sometimes it's good discoveries, sometimes great discoveries, but they are very few, very far between, and the capital cost of, of bringing these to production is huge. The jurisdictional problems are huge. The social issues. I mean, mining, geology, and mining is as much of a social science as anything else. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you, I mean, you've got to work with people to make things happen. So there are so many barriers to bringing to, to bringing new mines in. But but right now, I would say the copper market is uh, is is wide open for, uh, for for upside. Okay, so great supply and demand dynamics. Where should investors be looking? Should they be looking at those exploration or development companies right now in copper? A good exploration company is worth its weight in gold, to mix my metallurgical sure. metaphors here. Uh, developing co developer companies, you know, you're in that development process where they're spending money. Uh, but if you can find a developer who's on, who's on, the, on the glide path, you know, towards really, you know, coming in to a, uh, to a productive uh, cycle, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to production. That's, that's good. Uh, the, the, abs the actual producers are just cash flow machines. Uh, you know, when the, the, the price of copper should continue to go up. Mm -hmm. And as that price of copper goes up, uh, for the most part, the costs are what they are. They're fairly fixed. I don't see energy prices going up too much higher than where they are. The price of oil is what it is. I don't, I don't see it spiking up to, you know, from 50, 60, 70 bucks a barrel. We're not going to see $100 oil, you know, aside from some strange geopolitical thing. We're not going to see that for a while. Uh, so, so your costs are fairly controlled in the industry. People have been working very hard to squeeze those costs out of the, out of the cycle. Uh, so I think that a rising copper price is just money to the bottom line for a good copper producer. But, but you always want to keep your eye out for a great explorer because those, those great explorers can have great upside uh, in the sense that you, know, you can get a buyout. Uh, sure. like we, you know, but we, we've seen several in the last year. You mentioned electrification in relation to copper, which is not one of the metals we typically hear about all the time in relation to that. 
and you also sometimes we do, but people like to focus on lithium cobalt. Oh, you know oh, what I mean. Oh, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean. Sorry, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the, the battery metals. The battery yeah, metals. Uh, this is the battery metal question. Here, well, <laughs> well. So you mentioned <laughs> copper, which we don't always hear about. Sometimes yes. we do, but it gets overshadowed. We should hear more about. We should. And what what else should we hear more about in relation to electrification? Well. The, the world seems fixated on these electric cars that are coming down the road, again, mm -hmm. to mix my metaphors. Uh, and sure, that's great. There's, pick a number. There's 250 million vehicles in the world, cars and trucks, you know, if you're all the continents. And maybe, maybe two million of them are electric vehicles or hybrid electric vehicles. So that's less than 1%. So, to the extent that uh, you know, will will electrified vehicles you know become a big market? Well, they are going to grow fast. Is what they're going to do. I mean, it's going to take decades to you know replace the existing stock of cars. Not that that will ever happen. I mean, you know, in certain terms of industry, I mean, you drive around in a gasoline-powered car, but the world industry runs on diesel, and you know, just that's just a fact of industrial life. But when it comes to the electric cars. The focus has been on battery, 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 you know, lithium, cobalt, nickel, oh, you know, everybody's got their special secret sauce for the, oh, the batteries, the batteries. I mean, most of a battery is graphite anyhow, but the real secret to electric vehicles is rare earths. Mm -hmm. And the rare earths, first of all, there are rare earths in the batteries, and second of all, the traction motors, the motors that, that turn the wheels that actually make the rubber meet the road and, and give you the traction that rolls you down the highway, those traction motors run on strong rare earth magnets mm -hmm. and you're talking about moving from a few ounces of rare earths in a car to several pounds of rare earths in a car once you go electric now do the math you know you know 16 ounces per pound you go from a few ounces to a couple of pounds you're looking at factors of 5 and 8 and 10 and 12 in terms of rare earth consumption. Mm -hmm. uh, Preziodemium, neodymium, for example, just two, two names from the periodic chart, but they're critical rare earth elements in the magnets. So I see a really great future uh, in, uh, for rare earths. Now the downside, you're going to ask me. Of course, uh, of course China. 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 Uh, 85% of the world's rare earths are Chinese. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they, they captured that market in, in the 19, late 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s. They, they were there. I mean, at one point, they were up around 92% of global production was controlled by China. And so you're out here thinking, hmm, mm -hmm. how, do I, how, do I crack, how do I crack that? Well, the good news is that they were 92, now they're 85, which tells you that there's something going on out there. And there is something going on out there non-China. Uh, there's going to be more non-China. China has its own rare earth issues. They've been closing mines because of, rare, of environmental sure. problems. Uh, China internal rare earth per consumption is growing, uh, just because you know they're a big country. They're building lots of things for themselves. You know, building their own building. Most of the electric cars that are made in the world today are made in China, by the way. Mm -hmm. So you know they're making electric cars, electric buses. They're replacing entire fleets of, of you know city buses with entire fleets of city buses with electric buses and uh, and and plus everything else that uses rare earths whether it's electronics you know your smartphone mm -hmm. I mean my Apple iPhone uh, out of 92 elements on the uh, periodic table I think 63 of them are inside of an of an Apple iPhone according to a professor of chemistry at MIT who went to the trouble to you know figure this out so I see a great future for rare earths uh, and uh, and we've got some ideas on how to yes. crack that there it's it's not so much a mining play I as see. it is almost a chemistry play it's a downstream uh, refining and processing play but it's going to happen because it has to happen because the Chinese uh, side of the supply is drying up and so if not China is this in North America that we would see this you see globally I mean you, you've got uh, you've got operations in Asia uh, in Malaysia, sure, yes. for people who, who know what I'm talking about, uh, you're, you're seeing you're seeing a European move towards it, and there is a uh, I'll call it embryonic move in the in the U.S. Canada. Okay. And I say embryonic. I mean it's 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 advanced staged embryonic, but I mean, the egg ha the, the egg is starting you're starting to see the little chick peck at the at the at the shell to come out of the egg. That's how embryonic it is. But but we're going to see a lot more. Uh, North American, you know, U.S., Canada uh, type of uh, rare earth uh, development. 
Okay, great. I can't, I can't let you go without talking about gold. Oh, gold. How, yeah. how are you feeling about gold right now? Um, both prices and the events that are going on in the market right now. Well, we had a nice run towards the end of uh, 2018 and in the first month, two months really, of 19. Um, a lot of it had to do with you know, the Federal Reserve backing off on the interest rate uh, uh, increases. Uh, and announcing a different set of guidance for the coming year. Gold went up. Gold went from the low 1200s up to, what was it, 1340, over 1340 at one point. But it pulled back, you know, in the last week or so, just before PDAC. Thank you very much. You know, you know geez, oh man, you know, how to throw a wet blanket on the party here. But, but uh, you know, long term, when you look at issues of the big macroeconomic issues, you know, the U.S. debt, it just interest on the debt. It's going to be the size of the Pentagon budget within a couple of years. I mean, how do you pay? How do you pay that? How do you pay down that debt? I have an answer. You don't. You can't. It doesn't happen. So you know, we're, we're looking at something has to happen. Some sort of inflation. Some sort of substitution for the dollar as the almighty dollar. It's going to be the less the less mighty dollar. And there's going to be something else out there used in world trade, whether it's special drawing rights or whatever. Not like you or I will ever have special drawing rights in our wallet or our purse or anything. That's for the big banks and that's for the big international companies. But, uh, but, but, but gold is going to be a component of it. Uh, monetary gold is a wave of the future. Uh, it's out there on the ocean and it's going to crash ashore eventually. Um, when, you know, I just say, I just say you know, don't, don't spend too much time down at the beach because you'll get, you know, proverbially flooded, you know, by it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And, uh, uh, and then you look at gold supply. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, you know, we're mining millions and millions of ounces every year. I mean, large companies are mining, you know, pick a number, three, four, five million a year ounces from their own, you know, internal resources. And they're not replacing them, or they're replacing them inadequately, mm -hmm. slowly. They're replacing them with things that will take years to develop. And so the supply is tight. The demand is growing. It's a, it's a predicament for uh, uh, higher prices. Okay. Well, we'll certainly be watching gold prices and, and major gold events. So we last talked in January. That was right after the Newmont Gold Corp deal was yes. announced. And now we have a totally different thing happening. There's Barrick coming in after Newmont. Can you, what are your updated thoughts on everything that's going on there? Well, my updated thought is that uh, if you don't, uh, if you can't wait for WrestleMania in April, uh, in New Jersey, and you're really into it, you really want to see that WrestleMania, you should keep watching that, this whole Barrick Newmont thing because that is what's going on. It, it's, it's, a, it's an ego-driven corporate C-suite, uh, uh, you know, big banker kind of, uh, kind of play. You know, one big company trying to take over another big company. Uh, I don't think it reflects well on the uh, overall governance of, of, of big companies in the sector. I think, I mean, this, this is, we are, this is not, uh, this is not the impression of uh, well-governed, well-managed, thoughtful, deliberate uh, growth, shareholder friendliness that I think this entire sector wants to present to, uh, you know, readers, viewers, and investors out there who are thinking, gee, you know, should I, should I put some money into the gold sector here? So I, so on the, on my first feeling is that, that, that this is, this kind of rough and tumbleness uh, has no real good place right now. Um, to the extent that you know, will, will Barrick ever take over Newmont? Who knows? Anything can happen. Uh, whatever, whatever happens, somebody's going to take over somebody else. Newmont Gold Corp. We're, we're going to start seeing a lot of uh, you know orphaned assets. You know, they're, they're oh, going to yes. start selling things, and that's going to be rough because. Uh, there are a lot of companies out there that have their own assets, you know, intermediates, even juniors, and all, and if if the big guys are starting to dump things into the market, you know, over the next say year or so uh, after this all happens, um, you know, that that might be disruptive. Again, you know, it, it it doesn't mean that it's not a good sector to, to get yourself into now when things are as bad as they are, but uh, I I. Uh, I, I think it really stresses how important it is as, as an investor out there. If you are going to buy into a company, you really want to know something about the management. Are these people, do they have their heads screwed on? Do they have, they, do they have control of their egos? Do they, do they have their boundaries under control in terms of boundary issues? You know? uh, because those sort of personal things uh, that, are, that we're seeing played out mm -hmm. in you know, the, the, big, the big elephant mergers right now, 
uh, are, uh, are, are, are issues that reflect poorly and they are not terribly friendly to long-term investors. So it doesn't mean you can't make a lot of money in the gold sure. sector. I mean, you, you can. And I know people who have, you know, I, I mean, I've made a few. I've made a few bucks myself, but but, uh, but enough about me. The uh, it, it's doable. Mm-hmm. It's doable. But this whole spectrum that we see up there is is not good. I, I to, to use a different analogy, I, I, I almost envision another you know airline merger. You know, like United Continental. It took them five or six years to, to, to figure it out after they got themselves together. They couldn't even get the reservation systems talking with each oh, other. Uh, at the same time, you know. Where the airline industry used to have, you know, 15 companies, now it has four or five big ones. You know, I mean, they're finally making some money too. So, in, in, a, in a tough industry. Yeah. No, it's really interesting that you mentioned the image thing, because I have heard some arguments that, uh, well, now everybody is watching the gold space, and maybe this will bring those more generalist investors back in. But, but yeah, it gets, does kind of. Maybe there's a negative side as well. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's. It, they say there's no bad publicity as long as they spell your name right. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I I I I think if you if you have a choice in what kind of publicity you want, good publicity or bad publicity, you ought to go for the good publicity. Okay. You you ought to be known for doing the right thing, doing things in a in a very uh, you know careful and uh, uh, just deliberate manner. And uh, and I, and what I see here is. Is egos uh, taking over the uh, the business process, and I don't think it reflects well on that level of governance at that level of the industry. You know, the big elephant level. Okay. All right. Well, I think we'll leave it there for now. Who knows? Next time we talk, it might be another one of these big yeah. deals until happening. Until another time. Until until the next conference. Yes. Of which there are too many. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. One this thing. one is not too this one, this, no, this, this one. This is the conference. This is the important conference. We are here, and, and, and it's going to be great. Great. Okay, well, thank you so much. Once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Byron King.